So this video is going to introduce the first of our loops to you, um, or iterations, which is basically a repeated loop code that loops back upon itself. The first loop that we're going to look at is a for loop, and the reason it's a for loop, it's actually a counting loop. And what our counting loop does, um, it's called a counting loop because it actually knows the number of times the loop is going to repeat itself and the number of times the loop is going to run before it even begins. Now, the way you know it is a for loop is because it actually starts with the word for. We then set a variable name. So this could be anything. It could be if I was making a square, I might call it square. Or um, if I shorten it, I could call it SQ. Sometimes we use X or I or N. It doesn't really matter. You can use anything for your variable name. I'm then going to use in range. And I'm going to set it to be, go between 1 and 10, followed by a colon. Just like in the if statements, when I press enter, it's going to automatically indent it underneath the word for. Anything that follows the for, the next line should always start with the indent. And that way you know what is inside the loop, what is going to be repeated. And in this case, I want to print I out inside this loop. If I run it, you can see it's printed the numbers between 1 and 10. When it gets to 10, the loop would stop, so 10 is not shown in the output. Another little example, I could change it so that in my range, I'm actually going to change it now. Again, I'm going to print I, and this time, it'll go through, in fact, let's get rid of the first one for you. Let's just code that out using the comments so you can see exactly what this does. You can see it's actually just done the odd numbers because it's listed the numbers between 1 and 10, stopping at 10, that's why 10 is not in the output, and it's incrementing by a step of 2. It's going up by 2 each time, which is why it only prints out the odd numbers. In this next one, I'm going to minus 3. So this time, again, I need to be indented. I'm just going to code out the old loop. Oh, apologies, it's uh, hidden it. I'm going to make sure I've gone back a bit because otherwise it's going to give me an indentation error. It needs to start in the right place, so just be careful of that. And it needs to be a colon at the end, not a semicolon. This time, it's starting at the number 10. So it's going to go backwards. And the step, the increment, this time is a negative number. So it's going to start at 10 and count down in threes. So it should give us 10, 7, 4. And the last number, number 1, 4 take away 3 is 1, is not shown because it's the last number. This just gives you an idea of a simple for loop. As a challenge to see if you understand, I'd like you to have a go at this little challenge. So, can you... Ask a user to enter their name and then display that name 
three times. I'm also going to give you a second challenge to see if you can solve. What I'd like you to do is enter a number between 1 and 12. Then display the times tables for that number. If you want to pause the video, have a go, see if you can figure out what the code would be, then come back to me for the answer. Okay, the answer to the first one then. I'll just comment out the old code, just so it's not going to interfere with our new code, just by putting a hashtag. So, entering your name three times. I'm going to set the variable name. I want an input. And please type your name, something like that. I've got my for loop. Again, I'm using just I in range and we want it between 0 to 3 times colon at the end make sure it's indented and we're just going to print out the name so if we put our name as Bob oh, I should have left a space I always forget to leave that annoying little space do it again Bob 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 Three times. For the final one, just comment out the code again, just so we're ready. So I'm going to interfere. Oops. Pull that little or now. Enter a number between 1 and 12. So I'm just going to call this number, set my variable up. I need to use int, integer, and then I've got my input. Enter a number 1 to 12, something like that. Again, remember that little annoying little space, so that it's not going to put our numbers together. And then, for i in range and our range is 1 to 13 this time because I want 12 included in it make sure there's a colon at the end I'm going to do an answer now. I times by that number. If I then print on my next line, I times by number equals answer. So I've put quite a lot of things there. If I press run, if I pick a number, so I'll do three, I've got my three times table. I can run it again. Let's do my 12 times table. I can run it again. Five times table. So hopefully you can see how using four, give it a variable name, in range, tell us what that range is, will there be an increment, whether it's positive or negative, and then what do you want to happen, what do you want to be repeated for that number of times.